bolts to buy a proton drum. Wait, is that Skidbit Marks up ahead? Oh man, am I happy you two dudes showed. I've been out here all night. I can't believe it, Skid McMarks. I have seen every one of your races. You pulled off a triple Nova spin at Mach 2 at last year's Kerwin Cup. It's always good to meet a fan, little dude. I am Clank. This is Ratchet. Your uncle received your Infobot and asked us to assist you. Oh, I was wondering if he got that. My agent and I have been running from those blog all night. Only we ended up getting separated in the chaos, and I took a gnarly fall getting out of the Skid McMarks sports shack. Hey! Think you dudes can clear out the sand shark so I can get to my ship? Just give me my hoverboard if you do. Whoa, a real McMark's 4000? Consider it done. So yeah, the animation in the remake is terrible. Beautiful, beautiful character models, honestly. Really terrible animation. Ratchet was staring at the rock underneath Skid for like half of that cutscene. I said in the last video that this location is where things get difficult, and I was mistaken. I was confusing this with uh, Kerwan, because sometimes I go to Kerwan instead of Iridia. But no, Iridia isn't that far removed from its uh, from its PS2 counterpart. Sure, there's a lot more sand sharks, but they're still pretty harmless. Many of the secrets are in the same place as they were in the PS2 game. And the lighting in this particular area is very pleasant to see. And here Ratchet finds his very first gold bolt. Let's savor the moment. Okay, enough savoring. Moving on! The atmosphere is very thick aesthetically in this part of the level. Looks real nice. So as you might have seen already, the Sand Sharks do have spawners, though there's not a cartoonish picture of it in the corner like in the original game. The spawners don't add to the difficulty too much, but you do of course want to get rid of them first or else they'll just make more Sand Sharks. Clearing away the Sand Sharks with the Pyroster is the easiest way I've found to complete this objective, though it's not like it's going to be hard either way. It's pretty much just a hold the circle button and win situation. Wait, no, the circle button isn't fire in the remake. Yeah, the circle button's the fire button in the PS2 game. So as for Skid McMarks, I don't like his uh, I don't like his cutscenes on Iridia very much. But I think his introduction in the Infobot is a fair trade for the one in the PS2 version. It gives him a better reason to be near Iridia. It gives him a better reason to be under attack. It has good humor that establishes that Skid is surrounded by people who don't really care for his safety, but instead what he can do for them. As a minor downside though, it doesn't introduce the Agent character, and when we do see the Agent, he's incredibly less expressive than he is in the PS2 version. Like, they do a good job establishing a character for him with his very limited appearance in the PS2 version. But in this version, he's mostly just the, uh... He's mostly just the money-grubbing agent trope. That was pretty awesome! Thanks for your help! Here's your hoverboard! Oh, and it's autographed! To Ratchet and Clank, the chillest dudes I've ever hung out with on a hostile alien planet! <gasps> cool! Will you be able to get home on your own? I'll be okay, though I don't think I'll be able to compete in the Blackwater City Hoverboard competition. Kind of a bummer, dude. Hey, have either of you little dudes seen my agent? I feel kind of bad leaving him out here. He doesn't do well with an agent. In the original game, when Skid's agent is brought up, he kind of shrugs it off and goes, Eh, my agent is probably fine, because he's more concerned about his own safety and how to get back to the ship himself. So when you do find Skid's agent, it's entirely incidental, which goes a lot with the freewheeling feeling of the original game, where you don't have a clear goal most of the time. Or if you do have a clear goal, there's also a ton of optional goals that are not clear, because you're just exploring the planet, and you don't know what the goals are going to be until you, uh, until you get there. I'm not saying it's bad that Skid cares about his agent in this one, but it does make his character a lot more confusing. 
In the original game, it made sense that he left his agent alone because he was cowardly and was only concerned for his own safety. But here, Skid's, Skid seems like the kind of guy who would actively go looking for his agent, you know, to make sure his agent is safe. But instead, he's just like, I feel kind of bad for leaving my agent here, which is not a normal reaction to the situation if you care about someone. Like, he should either be freaking out about his agent's safety or indifferent to it. It would be incredibly unusual for someone who cares about a person's safety to not be visibly and audibly worried in this situation. It feels like Skid's kind of sedated when he says that line. Just doesn't... doesn't really fit. You know, I suppose it's possible that Skid assumes his agent is off in the sports uh, sports shack still helping with its construction. But he also knows this is a hostile alien planet, as is evidenced by his signature on the hoverboard that Ratchet wasn't even looking at. And he said that his agent doesn't do well with nature, which implies that his agent might not be inside the sports shack. So he should still be at least a little worried. Attention, future consumer. We thank you for your interest in the Skid McMark Sports Shack. However, your refusal to leave has forced us to activate the Constructobots. Have a nice day. There's also the, the possibility that the agent was left on a less hostile part of the planet. You know, we're thinking too much about this. It's, it's a minor detail, not that important. I bought the Proton Drum and I want to use it, and I think this is a good place to use it, but obviously I am mistaken. I'm not sure why I thought it was a good idea to put it here at all in hindsight, but I'm sure we'll get to see it put to better use in the next level. The Constructobots aren't too tough, by the way. They fire a flame wave on the ground that needs to be jumped over. Or you can just walk out of the way, but jumping over it, probably much easier. Attention, future consumer. The finest selection of hoverboards, grab bikes, and gyrocycles will not be in stock until next fall. The only thing waiting for you here is death. I do think the humor in this game is very nice. It's straightforward, but the delivery is always good. Okay, maybe not always good, but usually good. I decided to use the combustor to get that Constructobot up on the ledge while jumping over the Sand Shark. Completely unnecessary, I could have just used the Pyrocitor on the Sand Shark. But jumping over it looks a lot cooler, don't you think? I think the neon lights on these ledges contrast really well with the environment and go with the construction vibe that this, that this uh, section has. Especially considering in this version it's supposed to be this big, uh... This big commercial uh, project, you know? You don't really know what this place is for in the PS2 version. At least I'm pretty sure you don't. If you do, it's not explicitly stated. You know, considering there are sand sharks inside the sports shack, I'm going to go with my original statement that Skid should be way more concerned about his agent than he was. Especially with his new softer character. As for the quality of the game design between this level and the PS2 version, I think they're about equal. The remake's gameplay in general is solid, and the beef I have with it is almost entirely story and character related. It's true this level doesn't have an outstanding level design in general, fairly average, but this is still very early in the game. And this area with the tubes is something I always liked. Has information that belongs to Chairman Trek. Come on, don't make this hard. Give him up and no one gets hurt. Yeah, I'm telling you, I don't know where he is. You know celebrities these days, and they do whatever they want. We can work this out, can't we? We'll work it out by feeding you to the sand sharks. This is something I think works well with the remake's, uh, with the remake's depiction of the events because the Blarg are now involved in this whole situation on the radio, so having them involved with the Agent 2 only makes sense. It also makes his introduction less underwhelming than in the PS2 version, though. Though in the PS2 version, the lackluster circumstances surrounding his introduction give him more room to have a well-established character. I know that sounds weird, but you'll see what I mean when we get there. As for the gameplay here, we don't need to actually protect the agent or anything. He's gonna hide behind that rock forever. And the Blarg will just keep shooting at it and nothing will ever get accomplished. There's more of them! Hey, get them off my 
Did the voice actor change in mid-sentence, or what was that? This flying guy has a Gatling gun, just strafe left and right, you should be fine. Good work, kid. I think that's all of them. Hey, you must be the two heroes who saved my client, huh? Don't tell me, don't tell me. Socket and Clink. Ratchet and Clank. Right, right, beautiful. Sprocket and Plank. I like the sound of it. Real marketing potential. I could sell that. Uh, listen, my client and I got separated in our somewhat hasty trek back to the ship. I'd go meet up with them, but this place is crawling with sand sharks. Uh, think you can help me out? You have nothing to fear, sir. The sand sharks have been dealt with. Beautiful, beautiful. You two have heart. I could sell that. We are always happy to assist. The only line that makes the agent's character worth it to me in this version is that last one. That's grade A stuff. We really appreciate you helping us out. So where are you off to now? A hospital, I guess. Gotta get this leg checked out. A hospital? Skid, come on. You've been through worse. Uh, what are we gonna do about your sponsors? Um, I'm beginning to think you don't, like, care about me or whatever. <sighs> Fine. Uh, what about you, Renchy? Ratchet. Exactly. You want to be a hoverboard star? This infobot will give you all the details. Just tell him Don Wonderstar sent you. It's that time again. The annual Blackwater City Hoverboard Competition on Planet Rogar. Are you a young thrill seeker looking to show off your hoverboard skills? Then blast on over to Rilgar and experience the pulse pounding thrill of doing Mach 3 on a rocket powered piece of plastic. How exciting is the race? Just listen to some of our previous champions. I never miss the Blackwater City Hoverboard Competition, uh, except for next year's. I probably won't make that one. I can't feel my toes. Is that normal? <laughs> We're offering cash prizes and hollow cards to the winners. So head to Planet Rilgar and take a shot at the most extreme sporting event in the galaxy. And uh, try not to die. Wow, we just saved a celebrity. I want to check out that hoverboard competition. <laughs> Ratchet, we should explore the rest of the sports shack. So I guess going to find Captain Quark wasn't really that important, since uh, even after we rescued Skid and his agent, we're just kind of wandering around on the planet exploring shit. I mean, this is private property, even, and Clank's like, hey, why don't we go poke around at the rest of this closed sports shack and see what we can find? What the hell, guys? My sensors are picking up a strange energy signature near the swing shot targets. I believe it may be a gadget from Drek Industries. All right, let's have a look around. And of course, since we have the swing shot by default in this version, we don't need to go and get it from Kerwan, while we would in the PS2 version. found a portable hydro displacer designed by Dr. Nefarious. This ingenious device promised to move water from one place to the other. Though the design of this room is very different from the PS2 version, there is still a hidden goodie in here. 
Honestly, I do prefer the PS2 version of the room, but you know, you gotta make accommodations for changes in the design. It is worth noting that the Hydro Displacer is a different fr uh, different thing from the Hydro Harvester that was mentioned in the Infobot. Those are very different. With just a push of a button, the duo could now fill an entire swimming pool. Originally designed to unclog Valkyrie toilets, Ratchet would find the Hydro Displacer invaluable in navigating the sewers of the galaxy. You know, I wonder if there's a video game out there with sewers that are actually like real sewers. All video game sewers are so absurdly spacious and it's ridiculous. You know, sewers are meant to perform a function. They're not, they're not for people to walk around in. Or platform in, and there's certainly not any giant caverns for Spider-Man to chase Venom across in the sewers. Hey, do me a favor and buy something, will ya? I make a few more sales, and I win a set of steak knives! Wicked! Now you're almost too powerful! It's him, Skid McMarks. That man from the Infobot. In the flesh, little dude. You guys get a load of that epic space battle I was in? We saw ya, screaming for help. Uh, that was like a war cry. My agent and I got ambushed on the way to hoverboard practice. Did he survive the crash, sir? Ah, he's okay, but I've had a little trouble getting back to my ship due to my sprained ankle. Oh, come on. If you can take out all the sand sharks, I just might have a spare hoverboard for you. We'd love to help you, Mr. McMarks, but Ratchet and I need to find Captain... Shh. One of your boards? Hmm. I've always wanted a decent hoverboard. Well, all right. You just keep that foot elevated. Notice how even though this version is less structured than the remake, Clank's morals try to keep Ratchet focused on the task at hand, so it's not really a question why they're not focused on it, it's just that Ratchet isn't focused on it. This is a lot less stupid than in the remake where Clank's like, hey, let's go explore the rest of the sports shack, because that is not something he would do in this version of the game since he cares about saving people. You know, now. It's kind of a time-crucial thing. Every second they're dicking around trying to find a free hoverboard is a second that Drek could be killing innocent people, and Clank knows this and he's upset by it. So much for that, I guess. You know, who needs a sense of moral urgency, or characters defined by their beliefs, or characters that don't agree about everything? That's silly, that's silly stuff, nobody needs that. You've hopefully noticed that the gold bolt is in the same place that it is in the remake. Can't see the lighting is as good in this version of the game, unfortunately. The music is way funkier again, though. Just as with the remake, we're going to be using the Pyrocitor to deal with large groups of sand sharks. We can't really strafe with it, unfortunately, but we can just run around in a circle, which is which is almost as good. Now the spawners in this uh, in this version of the game, they don't they don't really put up much of a fight. That's not to say they put up a huge fight in the remake. But they at least took a few hits, and this one they just go down. Yeah, like that. Also a lot less hectic than in the remake, noticeably. It's fair to say that the remake's version of this area is more exciting and enjoyable, but it's not like either version is all that intense. No matter which of the two you prefer, you're unlikely to lose in this section. Again, I assume the lack of intense firefighting in this version is, is partially because it's at least half 3D platformer. Do you ever wonder if people still confuse Insomniac and Sucker Punch and Naughty Dog? 
Because I remember there was a time during the PS2 era where those three companies got confused. I wonder if anyone still does that. I mean, probably not so much anymore because they're not making platforming mascots now. Like, Insomniac has made Sunset Overdrive and Fuse and now Spider-Man. Here, man. Catch! A brand new Z3000! You can't even buy these! Well, I got a bail. Catch you dudes at the hoverboard races. Animation is so much more expressive in the PS2 version, it's not even humorous how large the difference is. Because we don't have the swing shot yet, unfortunately all we can do is go save Skid's agent now. Come on, you can do it. So, something I've noticed is that people seem to go to Kerwan before Radia, and the reasons for doing this are obvious, you know? Kerwan is where you not only get the Hella back upgrade for Clank, but where you get the swing shot, which is necessary to fully complete Iridia. But Iridia always seemed easier to me than Kerwan, especially in the remake. I like that you can see the Constructo bots up there on the girders welding before they jump down to fight you. It's actually kind of cute. I like that. The Constructo bots are not incredibly smart. Not, not even a little bit, but that's okay. I do like that the Constructo bots will attempt to fight the Sand Sharks in addition to you. You know, I always saw the Constructo bots here as more platforming hazards than real enemies. Because of the way their weapon works, they just stand in a single spot and wave it back and forth so you need to jump over it. And I think that's fair. I think that's a fair observation. No, you don't need to uh, chain your wrench throw into the slam, but it looks really awesome. Man, I forgot all about the purple lines in the elevator tube. Is there, is there a better term for that? I know some elevators are cylindrical. Do you just call them elevators? Is there like a special term for that? Because when you're making it, if you're commissioning an elevator tube, do you call it an elevator cylinder? What do you call it? Elevator tube, clearly. You will need a Gadgetron swing shot to traverse this area. Our records indicate that the swing shot is not available on this planet. Like, I know there are vacuum elevators, but is that the only kind of cylindrical elevator? Or is there a traditional kind of cylindrical elevator with, like, pulleys and stuff? Are there any elevator enthusiasts out there? So these Constructo bots, just like the others, only hop down and wave their flame around in a very wide spread. Very easy to dodge, very easy to jump over, again, more like a platforming hazard than an enemy type. The comparison is especially prevalent with this conveyor belt, though they probably could have made the conveyor belt go a little faster, I think. The area down here very similar to the PS2 counterpart, as almost everything in this level is, though the ledges are not glowing. The enemy layout is also very different. There is no Constructobot Sniper this time, but that is of course because the Constructobots fire very differently in this version of the game, so a Constructobot Sniper would not work out so well. I still wish they would have put the Constructobot up on that ledge. It would have made you uh, time your jumps better when you're hopping up there. I guess a few people would think that's frustrating instead of challenging, but he fire the Constructobot fires in a really wide spread, so you'd have plenty of time. And that's only if you don't have the ammunition to take him out ahead of time, because we do have the bomb glove, and you could easily just use the bomb glove to knock him down. And if they were worried that, you know, maybe using the bomb glove to knock him down would negate any challenge of having a Constructo Bot there in the first place, just have both. Have a Constructo Bot in the sand and one on the ledge. I mean, neither of them is actually going to be challenging because they're a very basic enemy type and if you understand the fundamentals of platforming and how the game mechanics work, then you're not going to get hit, but still. It would have made this area a bit more interesting. Not a lot, but a bit. In this version of the game, there are sand sharks in the tubes, while in the remake, the Constructobot could fire down the tubes. It's a, it's a pretty even trade, you know, neither is really challenging. Big difference toward the end of this section is, of course, that Skid's agent is not under attack from Blarg soldiers, as the Blarg soldiers are not here. They have nothing to do with this planet in the original version of the game. And because the circumstances surrounding our meeting with the agent are less intense, it actually gives the agent uh, room for more character. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Assuming I can jump, right? Ah, 
no signal whatsoever. This downtime is killing me. Do you need medical attention, sir? Don't be so literal, son. The problem is I'm stranded on this backwater planet and my star client is nowhere to be found. Hey, we saw you on that info bot. You're Skid's agent. Was Skid's agent. Haven't seen him since our ship crashed. And an agent without a client is like a flea without a dog. Say, you look like an athletic kid. If you can bring back the championship prize from the hoverboard races in Blackwater City, I'll make you my next star. We have no time for trivial matters, sir. Hmm. I could be the next Skid McMarks. So yeah, did you see how twitchy and high strung he was? Looked like he was about to have a nervous breakdown at any second. Pacing around anxiously and even after Ratchet and Clank showed up to talk to him, he was still clearly freaked out. And not by not because the Blarg were attacking, but because he was looking for his agent and he couldn't find a signal to contact anyone. He's just a very, uh, very unhinged individual. And they still managed to squeeze in those jokes about him being money-grubbing, too. There's just a lot more there.